Hello there, anybody who cares. Um, it's a bit noisy in here, but I'm going to make a quick video about first crack and second crack in coffee roasting. Um, I want to illustrate that better, and I'm gonna do it on my sample roaster. Um, I don't feel like making this video. <laughs> But I'm gonna do it anyway because sometimes good things happen when you don't feel like it. I just, I just sat on my glasses, so they're completely. I put a twist tie in them, and uh, <clears throat> my Trader Joe's lunch is waiting, waiting right there for me. But hey, let's check this out. What I'm gonna do today is roast two coffees. Let's put them under some light. It's advertised for BNT Trading PLC. Um, so we're gonna roast a wet process coffee right here. You can see that by the slightly more green color. This is an Ethiopian coffee from Getabore. Uh, it's a cooperative in the West Agaro area. And this is a natural coffee. And can you see the difference? This natural is not as yellow as you might expect, but you usually get this kind of slightly more yellow hue. Uh, I think you can see it. And that's just uh, because the way the coffee's dried in the cherry. Um, so I don't want to get too hung up on this, but I'm going to be roasting today in our Probat sample roaster. Uh, what is a sample roaster? It roasts a lot of coffee at once. You roast three coffees at a time. So it's simply a very productive way to produce a lot of samples. Is this a better way of roasting coffee than a home roaster? I don't believe so. But one of the great advantages of it, besides roasting a lot of coffee, is it's just very simple. You got a drum inside. Let's see if we can take a look here. There's my burners. We use an electric one. And there's the drum, the gears turn. The drum rotates inside and uh, you just can uh, use a spoon or I use this trier which I remanufactured myself from copper pipe um, and you can pull coffee out and look at it and that's just great as a demonstration of how to roast and to really be able to look and see coffee so sample roaster really gives you great access to the coffee and that's really cool um, one thing I just recommend for everybody who wants to roast coffee, a home roast coffee, at some point, roast coffee in a skillet, an iron skillet on your stovetop. It's a hard way to roast coffee. It's very easy to scorch coffee, but don't do it to get the best roast in the world. Do it because there's no sound, there's no motors <laughs> clanking away, there's no you know, air popper uh, sound. You can see first crack, you see everything happening right in front of you. Turn on the lights, uh, above your, your stove and just really experience coffee transforming itself right in front of your eyes. It's really educational. Um, one thing I want to point out is we use an LED light strip. You need good light to roast coffee. Um, I've, been, I've been all over the world and I've seen like $10,000, $20,000 sample roasting setups and they didn't have a light over the roaster so they could see. A uniform light. So I've got this uh, probably a little bit overheated. Uh, this is my sort of home controlled system. I've got a little crude PID that in an IKEA, uh, I think that was like a planter box like years ago at IKEA, but I was just looking for a wooden box that so I didn't have to worry too much about the electrical connections, you know. It's a long story. Okay, so let's start our roast here. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so here's our washed coffee. And I'm roasting 95 grams. So my timers are on and they're loaded in pretty much at the same time, never exact. And um, let's watch the roast happen. And what we're really gonna be doing is, I don't think with this, uh, the motor and the sound, we're gonna hear the cracks too well. I'm gonna try, 
but we're really going to pull out the coffee and really look at it um, so we can see the difference, like right before first crack, the different stages, as it enters first crack, and then I'm going to go ahead and let these roll into second crack so we can hear the difference and really see the difference. So I hope this works. And I may just like go take a few bites of my Trader Joe's burrito while we're in the early stages here. So this is a video I made a long time ago and it's roasting coffee in a basically a toaster oven. It's called an air fryer. And I wanted to show you this because, and I'm literally shooting this off of my laptop screen because I can't think of how else to do this. But check this out. Here's the green coffee. We're starting the roast. This is the transformation all the way from green through first crack and into second crack. So you're just really seeing the, the bean expansion there. It's quite a lot more than you, than you might think. Let's start right about here where we get some first crack. Let's listen and watch this. This is the coffee expanding with that trapped moisture reaching a temperature that it turns to steam, water vapor. Pushing out of the coffee and expanding it. You can see some of the chaff is, is releasing at the same time. Now let's go forward to second crack. Notice the difference in the sound, that snapping, shallow, rapid sound. It's quite different. Let's go back. Again, just looking at the way the coffee increases in, in volume. You can see on the side some of the, uh, the crack in the coffee, especially like here, for example. Look at this here, where that's opening up. And that second crack, and here too second crack, which is driven mostly by carbon dioxide. And this is part of why you know, at this stage here, you have the, the sharp edges on the coffee, the angular edge on the flat bean. And as it puffs, those become more rounded. And that's part of the appearance, the texture, texture changing, color, of course volume anyway kind of a cool little video okay so we already have some yellowing going on as i said sample roasting is, is quite fast the natural it's really moving along awfully fast and i think that's partially because i had the barrels empty so seconds on the first barrel there. As I said, sample roasting with a machine like this isn't like about doing the best roasting in the world. It's about doing a really uniform roast that you can compare one to the other and producing a lot of roasts, uh, you know, quickly. Um, you know, as you can see, like this is the cupping I need to do. So if I did those one at a time on any kind of roaster, it would it would be quite slow. What do we see? It's a little bit 
variation in color. The cap clinging to the coffee. center crease. Look at the color of it. See how dark it is? Here, we'll pull a sample and we'll compare that. That really changes your color perception. And 
I'll show you what I mean when I look at the coffee after, but look at the center crease there. See, it's light. That's a, something you can use to identify natural coffees when you're roasting them, if somehow you forgot. Now, this is a great roast, and I'd be stopping this right now. It's 9.55, but we're letting it roll. We've got a Quaker right there. judge the coffees too harshly when they're in this stage. And I think we'll be getting some second crack pretty soon, so let's listen. You can see the evenness, and what you also see is the surface texture of coffee changing, smoothing out. The color is getting even, surface texture is getting even, coffee is expanding under the pressure of water vapor as well as outgassing. Second crack is about to happen. What's second crack? Second crack is primarily driven by carbon dioxide uh, and uh, carbon monoxide actually. <laughs> There's some carbon monoxide and some other gases uh, reaching a, a, a critical point at the same time that the coffee itself, uh, the structure, the cellulose structure of the coffee coffee is primarily cellulose because it's plant material and it's sort of like wood um, in that way and uh, as that uh, becomes more brittle it more easily fractures under the pressure of the gases that are forming and that are driving out from the center of the bean outwards. Why does dark roast get oily is because it's driving out those oils from those cellulose pockets as it, uh, under that pressure. And why is that not good? Is because those oils will then oxidize. You're actually losing compounds under these pressures that are, you know, aromatic and result in, in, in flavor in your cup. So, coffee outgasses while it's roasting and it outgasses after it's roasting, which is why you wanna contain that to some degree. When you're smelling that coffee and being like, oh, that smells so great, you're kind of also losing aroma at that point. Put another little sample over there. It doesn't look so wet and processed anymore. First crack is much more of a popping sound like popcorn. Second crack is much more of a snapping sound. Part of that is because that the structure of the coffee has dried out and is easy to fracture. I mean, think of coffee as being like a wet piece of wood that you're going to throw in a fireplace and it's going to take time to um, and a lot of energy to dry out until it actually becomes a process where that piece of wood is roasting itself. That's exactly what happens with coffee. Coffee is endothermic. Uh, it, 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 that's the characteristic of the general reaction is you're putting in a lot of heat. Endothermic because it's absorbing that heat in order to transform that moisture uh, into water vapor. And then at the point of first crack, it becomes exothermic. That, that nature of that reaction changes and coffee is now roasting itself, essentially. And there's some other subtleties to that dynamic that uh, I won't go into, but now let's, um, let's take a good look at our roasts and see, see what we did, see what first crack looks like, what second crack looks like in terms of, you know, coffee just before, during first crack, after first crack. What are the differences we see to help you judge um, your roasts? I'm gonna eat my other burrito too. Okay, so I've tried to get away from that infernal racket of that sample roasting. And towards the creaking of my chair. Anyway, these coffees are Ethiopia Gitabore washed uh, PSS, that means pre-ship sample and uh, Ethiopia Rafisa Natural, that's uh, Sidama coffee, uh, and that was an offer sample. 
So, what I have here, I know this one's out of place. I tried so carefully to walk over here and not screw up and <laughs> to trip and mix these up. So, um, the overview here is we have uh, three coffees up until first crack. And this is first crack. Uh, oh, I was gonna put FC, but that for us means full city. Okay, this is a comparison of coffees at the same time. This is the washed. Washed is means wet processed as well. And uh, this is the natural, which also means dry processed. I don't know. And um, gosh, I forgot what this one was. What is this one? Well, anyway, <laughs> this one is the mystery. This is where we ended up, and I specifically chose some, some coffee that's cratered here, and we'll talk about that. But this is, the, this is the washed well into second crack, and this is the natural. So one thing to remember is if you don't hear a ton of crack, it's also because you're roasting, you're not roasting that much coffee. And um, it, guys have a creaking chair. Um, it tends to be pretty subtle. Uh, in, in some coffees and what I find is that is that first and second crack can be more subtle with natural coffees I've had naturals I've roasted where I have not heard the cracks at all anyway let's let's take a look let me see if I can use my camera phone Isn't that amazing camera and a phone who would have thought so this was early development we really got to get closer here Okay, let's see if we can do this. That's pretty good. So, it's so funny. I used to have to make macro images like this with like this fancy Canon and this light stand and all this stuff. And here I am with a $10 selfie stick tripod. And Anyway, sorry. Um, so this is early, early in the roast stage. And you see... The, the chaff is, is, a lot of chaff clings to the coffee, even in, even in the final stage. But here's, here's where we end up in a, in a kind of medium roast. And I know it looks really dark right there. It's partly just the lighting. Um, but uh, in fact, you know, hold on just a second. I'm just gonna go get a supplemental light. Just pause. Okay, is that better? I think it's better. Um, you know what these are, these, uh, uh, these um, like selfie things and you're supposed to like put the camera through there so you look better it's like kind of they're really useful and they're cheap and uh, what that does is really fill in the light a lot like I say lighting when you're roasting is so important and it still looks darker than it does to my eye here but anyway let's really get in there with the light no let's leave it right about there Okay, so this is our, our early, early roast development of the washed coffee. And I only pulled samples of the washed. And, you know, what you really see is, is it still just kind of looks like green coffee that's just been colored brown. The, the uh, crease is incredibly tightly closed. And You know, look at this here. This, this crease is incredibly tightly closed. No, no opening. And I keep trying to find the right words to describe this, but that edge of the coffee, the reason it looks like green coffee that's colored is, is it just hasn't expanded and that edge is sharp. It's angular. And that really changes. And, and is, you really notice that as you get to this. Let's, let's jump ahead here. Now I can see we have a pea berry. But let's just like look at this bean right here. Now I can even see in profile that it's got a bit of a puff there. And look at that crease, it's, it's open a bit. Now one thing, a tip, is that really good dense coffee doesn't open as much. A uh, soft low ground coffee uh, will tend to open up more in roasting. Um, and you know, bean density is really important to quality. One of the aspects of high altitude coffee 
is that that cellulose matrix that forms the coffee, it's the plant material, is, is, is smaller pockets and it's tightly compacted um, because the coffee fruit develops slowly at higher altitudes due to different plant respiration and colder climate. So plants grow faster when it's nice and warm. Um, God, I hope I'm not getting that wrong. So somebody's gonna really ding me on that one. But, okay, so here's our development. And this is really not a lot further along, but you can see that the edges have changed. And this is just before first crack. We have a lot of silver skin. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go too much by judging silver skin, but like, look at this. In fact, this one is loose. And what you have, that silver skin comes off as chaff. Oh, now I really want to get it off. It's like peeling, peeling a sunburn. Um, and as you can see, as we enter first crack, you see a lot less chaff. The exterior chaff is kind of let go, but you still have in the crease, it clinging to chaff, and that's because that structure, that bean, the, the coffee bean structure is like a fist. If you can imagine it, it's like, it's like this, it's closed in. Now my hand looks gross. Uh, and you know, it's pinching and the chaff is here. Let's say my, the fingernails are my chaff. And so coffee's not just like this solid little rock. Uh, when you look at it, and maybe I can put up a photo of one of my cross-section uh, images of, of green and roasted coffee, and you really see that. Um, so as it expands, it will let go of additional chaff here, and that's usually kind of happening a bit after first crack in my experience, although uh, I know other people say it happens a lot before. I think some of this outside stuff comes off. So... Now we're seeing a little bit more even surface experience. I would drink this coffee. It's not really all the way 100% through first crack. Uh, I, I like coffee that way. That is light roast. They call it, oh, they call that Nordic roast. So I was really into making these single bean roast videos, and this one's really interesting. Watch this. It's a time-lapse video, but I'm, I'm manipulating it by hand. Now watch the expansion, especially over here. The crack opens really violently at first crack. It pops, and then it actually, as the coffee expands, shuts. It's really interesting. But again, this illustrates bean expansion. Another thing that's that's interesting is to watch, I don't know what coffee this was, but watch the end of this bean here. And this is something you see in very soft coffees. Look at those cracks that develop there. You'll see that in Brazil's lower grown coffees, coffees that aren't dense. So again, this shows a lot of the changes that occur from first to second crack. Now this is a nice developed city, city roast and you're seeing a lot more evenness on the surface. Although to my naked eye, it's, um, it's a little lighter than, than it looks on the camera here. This, this looks awfully dark. If we go in more, yeah, that's about it. And let's look at the natural at the same stage. Now the point I was trying to make during roasting is how that silver skin in the coffee is stained dark. That really doesn't matter. Um, although I have tasted the difference between the chaff from, from naturals and washed, and the naturals definitely has a different flavor. So there is some component of flavor in there. However, it really throws your perception of the roast um, without that. You kind of do a sort of uh, color averaging or, or averaging of the lightness here and it comes out looking a lot lighter. And to my eye here, and I know it's a little different on, the, on this camera, these are, this is a little darker and it's, it's got a very much a, a different smoother surface texture. Um, however, they're not that far off. Now, 
There's our mystery coffee, we don't know what that is. And this is where we ended up, second crack. Now what's happened here? Let's look at the wash, uh, the natural. So now, boy, these both look, that silver skin has turned dark in both of them. So that really amplifies the dark look. And we see a lot more openness in the coffee, a lot more expansion. And that expansion means that the, the crack is open more, even though these are very dense coffees. So dense coffees don't tend to open up as much, but at some point they're going to. I see some other fractures here. And one interesting thing is I think I, I, I got these both to about the exact same degree. Um, there's a little pea berry. However, check this out. Now here we have the, the ignition Oops, there goes my glasses again. So, as I said, first crack is water vapor locked in the coffee. I mean, moisture locked in the coffee, turned to water vapor, creates pressure and expands the coffee bean as it liberates. And you can actually, a little before first crack, you can really sense that it's steam coming off the coffee. With some roasters, you can put your hand in the exhaust and feel the wetness of it never feel that with second crack. It's very dry coming off the coffee and that's because second crack is the gases reaching this critical point where they um, the pressure from the gases overcomes the structure of the coffee bean which has become increasingly brittle. And one thing it can do is it becomes so explosive and in a fast roast or a coffee with uh, uh, this can happen, well, no, no, it doesn't happen with fresh coffee, but um, hold on, rewind. <laughs> with, a, with a coffee, as, as it gets dark, it becomes so explosive that it blows discs off of the coffee. And uh, when I walked over, oh, there it is. There's the chip, coffee chips, that right there. I think there's a whole marketing opportunity selling coffee that's 100% chips. But uh, somebody who roasts massive amounts of coffee dark, uh, we were next to a place called McLaughlin in Emeryville. Oh my God, they roast dark. And uh, they must have an issue with these chips go everywhere and they, they're, they can combust. So you gotta do a lot of cleaning with that. And I'm sure they did. I really, this one has a little eye, eyeballs. It's really cute. It has a very cute dark roast coffee bean. So, we see quite a lot of difference between, let's look at the, let's put the natural first crack, natural second crack together. Nice, sorry, there we go. Nice uh, city roast, I'd love to drink this, this not so much. And um, quite a lot of even, uh, even surface texture there, that's another thing to look for. See a little more bean expansion over here, a little more openness in the creases. Like check out, let's say this one and this one. And those are some of the things that, uh, you know, besides the audio cues, which can be very difficult to hear. You know, you use a bee more and that coffee batch is tucked away from you. You use an air popper and you have that whining motor or you use a probat and it's like clank, clank, clank. And um, here's some other clues to where your roast is at.